G'day, I'm Dan, and welcome to my product review. And it's for a product that I've been quite anxious to get in the post, and it's finally arrived. And it's this it's the Tamiya Spraywork HG Superfine Airbrush. Not a lot's known about Tamiya airbrushes really. When I went to do a bit of research on these online, there was only a fairly limited amount of information available. So, hopefully, this video will be useful to some of you that might be thinking about getting one of these, and also why you might want to get one. First of all, um, just a bit of clarification around uh, the Tamiya airbrush range. There's basically two ranges that they sell. There's a standard range, which is a range that doesn't have the HG moniker and may or may not have reference to Sparmax, which is uh, their partner in manufacturing those airbrushes. And I believe they're made in China. Um, they're supposed to be perfectly fine airbrushes, but they're a little bit cheaper, so they're great if you're on a budget. And then they also sell uh, a range of slightly dearer airbrushes which have the HG moniker which is high grade. And these particular airbrushes are made in Japan. And that's the one I went for. They come in 0.2 and 0.3 uh, millimetre needles and all sorts of uh, bits and pieces. So you might want to do a bit of research to see what's current when you're watching this video. But uh, let's have a look at this one, and uh, I think generally speaking they're all fairly similar, so you'll get a pretty good idea from watching this video about the HG series. So as you can see the packaging's pretty straightforward, it's just a cardboard box, we've got uh, obviously it's designed to be able to be uh, displayed in the uh, store, retail store. We have to me a sort of um, trademark now hexagon look, which they use for so many of their call outs and paint codes and things. And these clear pieces here let us look into the airbrush itself. You can see the airbrush is fairly straightforward. We get one airbrush and a couple of accessories, and that's about your lot. Um, we go to the side of the airbrush here. We can see again it's got Spraywork HG Super Fine, um, made in Japan. If we look at the other side here, we can see that we have the Tamiya America Incorporated uh, address, which is interesting because that kind of suggests that uh, this airbrush is intended to be sold in the US market. Um, and the reason that's interesting is because here in Australia, where I'm doing this review, uh, you just can't buy these airbrushes over the counter. Um, they're just not sold by the importer of Tamiya products. And I suspect that's true of quite a few markets. So I actually ordered this airbrush from Japan. And uh, when they actually shipped it, I found it was shipped from California in the United States. So that would kind of uh, reaffirm that perhaps the US and Japan are the two main markets for this particular airbrush series. Um, the item number by the way for this particular airbrush is 74514 one Okay let's have a look on the back here and um, we've got a illustration of the airbrush itself which is you know fairly standard dual action style airbrush. The super fine signifies that it has a 0.2 millimeter needle and that's also written on the back there in case you weren't sure. And then down towards the back uh, the bottom of the packaging here, we've just got some advertisements for all, some of Tamiya's uh, compressors and compressed air. So that's pretty straightforward, simple packaging. Let's go and have a look inside the box and see what we get. Now, full disclaimer, I have opened this box previously just to make sure that all the contents were there and the airbrush worked, but I haven't really done a lot with it, so uh, you and I will still be learning a lot as we go along with this particular review. So as you can see, the airbrush itself is packed in some foam. We'll leave that for a moment and just uh, have a look at the documentation we get with the airbrush. And we get this sort of leaflet. And one of the interesting things about this is it's written in Japanese and also in English, which is handy. So we get a little bit of a description about how to connect our airbrush up to our compressor. Uh, we get a little bit of talk there about actually uh, what's the right consistency to mix the paint in order for it to work successfully with the airbrush. A little bit of basic instructions there on how to hold the airbrush and how it basically works. And on the other side we have uh, some demonstrations of what the sort of coverage we can get with the airbrush might be. Some precautions about how to actually work with an airbrush, particularly to do with ventilation. Uh, some basics on cleaning the airbrush, which is quite interesting. And uh, this actually caught my eye because one of the things that uh, I think is a perpetual debate amongst modelers is how should you clean your airbrush and how often should you clean it? 
For example, one of the things they say here is that you should uh, back flush air and thinner through nozzle and cups, effectively back flush your airbrush to clean it. And I know uh, Phil Flory from Flory Models is not a fan of that approach, and so I've sort of wondered if it was the right thing to do with my airbrushes or not, but it seems here, at least from Tamir's point of view, uh, you certainly should. It also makes another interesting comment as well, which is that, um, I'm just gonna find it here, uh, some precautions about using the needle. Oh yeah, it talks about disassembly for thoroughly cleaning the airbrush, and it mentions you should periodically remove the needle and clean thoroughly using thinner and soft cloth. It talks about how to actually do everything apart. But when it comes to mentioning the nozzle, it says a nozzle can be removed using the included wrench. However, frequent removal and attachment of the nozzle will, will wear sealant on its thread, resulting in a back flush of air. Remove it only when necessary. And it's got in brackets to clear, cure the paint in the nozzle, etc. So they're actually saying that you should be um, a little bit cautious about dismantling your airbrush all the time. That you should only really completely dismantle it as and when it's required which has kind of been my philosophy, but I know a lot of modelers like to pull things apart and clean their airbrush thoroughly after every time they use it. So, uh, interesting that to me you're actually saying that's not perhaps not the best way to go, that you should just uh, clean the needle uh, from time to time, uh, back flush the airbrush obviously after you use it, and really only look at completely dismantling it if, uh, if required. So I think that's probably the advice I'm going to take. In the last illustration, we have an exploded view of the airbrush itself and some um, call-outs as to what the names are of all the various parts, which is quite nice. So let's have a look at the actual airbrush itself. As you can see, there is basically three parts you get with it, so it's fairly basic packaging. First of all, we have our dual-action airbrush. Remember, this is a 0.2mm uh, needle nozzle combination. We also get a small wrench for the needle, uh, sorry, for the nozzle. And we also get an additional valve. And for most of you, this valve will be redundant. This is actually a valve that's there specifically for some of the Tamiya compressors. I think some of their uh, lower cost diaphragm style compressors. Um, for the 99% of you watching this review, you will not need that. Uh, adapter so effectively that's uh, surplus to requirements you can leave that in the packaging however you okay so I've uh, reassembled the airbrush and we're ready to go I've got my compressor charged up now one interesting thing is you do not get any sort of quick change adapter with it so I've bought one off eBay which cost me like a dollar it's the same one you would use on an Iwata airbrush so we'll just put that one in place, connect her up, okay, so we've got some air. For our paint, we're going to be using some Alclad 2 lacquer, uh, this is their gloss black base, ALC 305. I've chosen this one because it's nice and thin, so it should spray through our airbrush without me having to thin it down for this demo. And being black, of course, it hopefully should be easy for you to see. Make sure we've got some spray, which we have. So what I'm going to spray onto today for the demo is just a back of a cornflakes packet. Just uh, the back cardboard there. Which seems as good as anything. And we can see what we do. I'm running the compressor at about 21 psi at the moment. Now I don't know if we can go lower than that or what we can go higher. I'm just sort of trying this as, as I go with you. So first of all, let's just see if we can get something to happen. And there we go, you can see we've got a line. And let me just tell you, that was extremely easy to do. Very intuitive. Very easy, so I reckon I could probably write my name with this. very easily. Um, it, is, it does actually feel like it can probably drop the uh, pressure down a little bit as well, so I will do that in a moment. Let's see if we can, uh, of course, do noughts and crosses, which is always a good test. There 
Now I'm spraying that probably a little bit too far away to get it very fine. But that's working absolutely fine. Let's see if we can get some wider coverage and see how we can go. So you can see there we have a bit wider line. So that's extremely good actually. No complaints about that at all. Uh, let's just try and do a bit of general spraying and circle your motion here, just working my way out as I go. Not a problem. Very smooth, very easy to use, uh, actually really, really impressive. So what I think I might do is just drop the pressure down a little bit because I think this airbrush will cope with that fine. Alright, so I've got it at about 15 psi now. Let's just see how we go with that. Not a problem. Now it's actually, it might be hard to see in the video, but that line is actually slightly thinner and it's certainly clearer than the line I had there because I'm getting a bit closer to the cardboard when I'm painting here. Uh, let me just try and draw something like a circle. Look, this is absolutely fantastic. This is certainly more than good enough for camouflage um, on aircraft and tanks and what have you. Um, I don't pretend by any stretch of the imagination to be a very accomplished airbrush user and I am already feeling in my very first use of this airbrush I am already feeling much much more confident about this airbrush than I am about this particular airbrush which I've owned for over a year now so that sort of gives you an idea and you'll have to excuse the compressor running in the background there. Um, so, overall impressions. Absolutely fine. Let's try and... Uh, let's do a little bit of modelling. Do a bit of camouflage here. Actually, let's go a step further and just do one more test. Let's see how we could go at painting in between the lines. Again, keeping in mind this is the first time I've done anything like this with this airbrush and I'm not, as I said, an expert at using airbrushes by any stretch of the imagination so if you're an average person with an airbrush then welcome to my world and you can see that even so this airbrush is working beautifully it's making me look good um, which is no mean feat when it comes to model making so no problem whatsoever so I'm sure as I got more confident with what I was doing with the airbrush um, I'd get better results yet again so this spray is absolutely superbly it is extremely comfortable to hold in the hand the trigger motion is very smooth and nice and precise I mean I felt very much in control of the airbrush uh, the quality of the work I'm getting out was me not the airbrush so I'm sure that as I get more confident and experienced with it I would get even better results but as you can see even there it's actually more than good enough 
uh, for any sort of modeling 172 scale one whatever whatever sort of modeling you do I think this airbrush is going to work absolutely fine okay so earlier in the review I mentioned when we were looking at the instructions for the uh, superfine airbrush that it uh, was manufactured by BB Rich in Japan and that does have some significance in my decision to go ahead and buy this airbrush and that is because that happens to be the same manufacturer that makes another uh, brand of airbrush that are very familiar and well respected by modelers around the world and that's Iwata so this is actually an Iwata HP M1 that I purchased uh, about three months ago now um, it's my first Iwata airbrush and I was very impressed with the uh, quality of the airbrush itself. This is actually a single action airbrush and I'll do a separate review on it. But the trigger action and just the general quality of the construction, the chrome, everything else about it was absolutely first class. So my first thought was I would go ahead and get another Iwata uh, dual action airbrush with the smaller 0.2 needle. Unfortunately when I went online to see what sort of prices I'd be paying uh, it's not a cheap brand. Uh, obviously it's a well respected brand, it's a good quality brand, there's no argument about that. But you would never accuse them of being cheap. So what I found interesting was BB Rich, who make the Iwata airbrushes, also make the Tamiya airbrush. And now that I've got these two airbrushes side by side, it's fairly obvious that they are from the same manufacturer. So let me give you some examples just on these two alone. For a start, let's have a look at the caps for the actual paint uh, nozzle, uh, the paint repository on the top there first of all let's have a look here at just the lids for the paint oh, three okay first of all let's just have a look at the caps here for the paint cups and you can see let me just zoom in a bit there for you It's back into frame. Okay, there's the Tamiya one. And there's the Iwata one. And if you have a look at them, you can see that they are, in fact, exactly the same. And there's a good reason for that, because they are exactly the same part. They're completely interchangeable between the two. Another giveaway is if we go and look at the Tamiya one here for a start, and just have a look inside there, you can see it's a very high-quality finish. I haven't properly cleaned the inside of that, but... Nonetheless, you can see it's a very high quality finish and you can see there the very flat uh, bottom there of the paint cup. Let's compare that with this one. And you can see the same kind of finish and the same type of machining going on at the bottom there of the paint cup, the same flat bottom. Uh, the chrome work is also virtually identical as well. And when I got online and actually started looking at some uh, Iwata airbrushes I also I think I've pretty much identified some of the parts like this front part assembly here are the same as some of the Iwata branded ones so I think there are parts in this airbrush for example that are interchangeable with the um, Iwata HPC probably the HPB I think it is um, but certainly I, I'm pretty confident that you can get parts for things like needles and the nozzle from the Iwata catalog and it will fit the Tamiya airbrush um, in Australia you can't get the Tamiya branded airbrushes at all and um, this is a great shame so I had to import this one as I said earlier um, I'm not sure how many markets in which they do sell them I suspect these are only sold in Japan and in the US so for the rest of us we're expected to buy uh, another brand from the same manufacturer like the Iwata but to be quite honest having just used this airbrush and, and had a chance to um, use it for a little bit I think this airbrush feels every bit as good a quality as that Iwata. Now I can't tell you for a fact that it's as good as a dual action Iwata airbrush because I don't have one to compare it with. But I can tell you this is a very high quality airbrush. Uh, it is very nice to use, very very nice to use in fact. And that's really important. Um, not just because of the spray pattern you can give and all those sorts of things, all the technical reasons why a good quality airbrush is important. But there's another reason why, which is the same reason I got this airbrush, and that is that you want a tool that's going to allow you to fade airbrush. Um, and a good quality airbrush is going to work intuitively and simply 
and allow you to focus your attention on the model which means of course hopefully you'll get a better finish but I think just as importantly you're going to enjoy the experience of spray painting and working uh, with your model in this respect that much more if you're not dealing with an airbrush that's temperamental or clogging up all the time or seems to vary the paint flow for no logical reason or what have you. Um, I don't think for a moment that to me your airbrush is going to give you any trouble at all. I think it's a very high quality device. It's going to work extremely well. And at least in Australian dollars, um, this particular airbrush cost me about $120 Australian on eBay. Uh, to get the equivalent of water, I've got to pay about $240 to $250 Australian. So basically, this was half the price of the equivalent of water airbrush. And certainly, as far as the quality is concerned, I am more than happy with it. So there you go. If you've been thinking about getting a Tamiya airbrush, I can certainly recommend them on quality. You'll have to make your own mind up about spare parts availability because Tamiya do not advertise spare parts for these airbrushes. Uh, I'm quite confident that you will get Iwata parts that will fit them, but that's something you'll have to make a decision about whether you feel comfortable with doing that. Uh, certainly I get the impression that this will be a very good quality uh, and very durable airbrush. And for the price, I've certainly got no complaints. So that's the uh, Tamiya Spraywork HG Superfine Airbrush with a point to needle and nozzle. Hope you enjoyed the review and we'll catch you on the next one. Little one, how are you? <laughs>